Now, deep rural municipalities in KwaZulu-Natal are currently battling to collect revenue that's meant to improve the lives of residents. They still depend on government funding to provide water and electricity and to build roads. The drought in areas such as uh, Umsinga is further exacerbating conditions. This is Dungamanzi in Umsinga, which means murky water. The area gets its name from the muddy water in this dam. Out of desperation, people share the water with animals. It really concerns us that people share water with cattle. People get sick, people get diarrhea. We now have to have money to go to hospital, but we have no choice because we need water. So we use the same water to cook with and also drink. We are now desperate for clean water. I hope that government can provide us with cleaner water because uh, the drought has even affected our livestock. Umzinyasi District Municipality is one of the districts in KwaZulu Natal that has been severely affected by the drought. More than 170,000 people live here. Residents, the majority of whom are poor and unemployed, often have to pay for water to be brought in from the Tukela River down in the valley. It's the water in our community and our children are unemployed and nothing is going well. Sometimes we are forced to hire cars to bring us water in buckets and it is very costly for us. We are complaining the most because we can't live without water. The municipality is renting water tankers as a short-term drought relief solution. The service which has the biggest backlog, highest backlog in our area, is water. But sanitation is not the responsibility of the local. It is the responsibility of the district municipality. And I know the district has planned, has done the backlog study on that, They've prepared the business plans. They've got master plans for the, for the entire area, but they only lack funding. The district aims to provide 18,000 of the 26,000 unserviced household in the next three years. They've fared better with electricity provision. 70% of the households have electricity. Nungisi Kumalo, SAPC News, Umsinga. Water leaks cost the country billions annually and the city of Johannesburg is no different. Despite the various initiatives to save the precious commodity, aging infrastructure and poor management see vast amounts go down the drain. The municipality is continuously rolling out projects all in a bid to curb these leakages. With just over 5 million residents, Johannesburg is a thirsty city. At least 1.3 megalitres are required daily. The water-scarce area gets most of its supply from neighbouring Lesotho and demand continues to grow amid migration and urban sprawl. Joburg Water manages over 12,000 kilometres of the water distribution network. The city is facing a multi-billion rand infrastructure backlog as most pipes have outlived their lifespan. We also have a, a backlog in terms of services in water, Johannesburg water of roughly 12 billion rand. Our investment in infrastructure over the past two, three years have already reduced that number significantly. We are in the city, we're in the process of uh, analysing to see exactly where we are right now and how far we've come. In a bid to upgrade infrastructure and reduce loss, Hundreds of kilometers of piping are being replaced and 500 pressure-reducing valves installed. This is primarily aimed at minimizing pipe bursts, which are a major contributor to water outages. We've seen a reduction in burst of roughly 3,000 bursts from 45,000 a year to uh, just under 42,000 bursts that we have uh, encountered over the previous financial year, so that is yielding results. We are also then started with online or on-site um, teams, leak detection teams in areas like Soweto where we have a high volume of on-site leaks and although on-site leaks are normally for the account of the account holder or the landlord. In this case, we are going out to, to detect and find those leaks on properties to be able to curb our high demand in areas like Soweto. 
Government has also rolled out a war on leaks program, an artisanal traineeship that skills plumbers to help municipalities save water. Hasina Gori, SABC News, Johannesburg. The Maluti Apofung municipality in the Eastern Free State, which includes Castel, Clarence and Putadichaba, is in dire financial straits. Little has changed there since the municipality was placed under administration. The cash-strapped Maluti Apofung municipality was placed under administration in February 2018. The move was prompted by a collapse in governance and political clashes. The situation was bad that workers were forced to down tools over unpaid salaries and fringe benefits. Residents had to deal with frequent water and power cuts, a problem that has been affecting the municipality for almost five years. Water, sometimes you can say greyish, brownish, is full of worms, something like that. The water there we drink here like is like it affects like like, like in, in our stomach like when you drink it in the morning you have to go to threat and then you know, you don't you don't feel good. Allegations of corruption also surfaced. The ANC asked 16 of their councillors for voting with the opposition in removing its former executive mayor Vusi Chabalala. The expulsions led to the August by-elections. 89 candidates from six political parties, including the 16 former ANC councillors, contested for 15 vacant wards. In the end, the ANC lost 10 wards to its former councillors who contested as independent candidates. We are tired of ANC because ANC is doing nothing for us. Empty promises all the time. Now it's enough, it's enough. There's a, a lack of work. We are dying because of poverty. The municipality is still on the knife edge. It owes power utility almost 3 billion rand. And the power utility attached municipal assets to recoup its debt. However, they were later retained following government intervention. We believe the council collapsed because the ANC is in tatters. There's no leadership in the ANC. The ANC and the independents, the 15 expelled ANC councillors, this municipality has collapsed in their hands. Before they were expelled, those councillors, they were ANC councillors. Water is a huge problem. Sewage is also a huge problem. Electricity is a huge problem. And um, the municipality, the municipal government here actually have failed the people. This is a, a clarion call. This is a message that the electorate is sending to the African National Congress, that African National Congress must never ever undermine our people. The ANC says it's dealing with the challenges. And our people have also raised issues around uh, our internal squabbles as an organization. So we commit ourselves as the ANC Free State to make a serious introspection in relation to all these issues that have been raised. Government has promised to assist with the recovery plan. It is in our take that we want the municipality to work. We want it to model as the best run municipality, as you all know the history here. Despite all the governance challenges, residents demand an urgent solution to the water crisis but with dam levels at its low in the region, the situation may be far from over. Apumele Lemtlalane, SABC News. Now, the collapse of water supply infrastructure in the Eastern Cape-based Amatole District Municipality has had devastating effects on five of the six municipalities under its administration. Areas such as Mkuma, Bashe, Great Cay, Raymond Mklaba and Kushwa have had a spate of violent protests with uh, residents demanding water. The prevailing drought is making a bad situation worse. Dams across the region at all-time lows, while some have actually run dry. Gualana village in Pedi is one of the worst affected areas. Pipes and pumps that are meant to take water to the village are faulty. Residents say they haven't seen a drop of water coming out of their communal taps for three years. <laughs> Out of desperation, residents took to the street, blockading the N2 that runs through Petty. Getting water is a struggle, more so for the elderly like the 90-year-old Nosapo Makanda. 
Once you deny people access to water, you've finished abusing them. You can't do anything without water. We've been reduced to paupers who go around asking for water from neighbors with tanks. We have to cook, bath, do other things using water. Nolisi Lemelapi and her husband are wheelchair bound. Fetching water on their own is impossible. My husband and I are wheelchair ridden. We can't do anything by ourselves. This water situation makes things worse. Residents of Pedi are trying to beat unemployment with food gardens, but their crops are failing because of lack of water. Black Guard, CSC support in the community. We support the community through this garden project, especially the elderly. As you can see, the beetroot and onion and all other veggies have been produced. People will be the worst affected. Those of us who are unemployed depend on this. The district is looking for sustainable solutions. That's what we need uh, uh, about uh, that 1.2 uh, billion rands for the upgrade of, 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 of the water treatment works for, 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 for the Sunday Dam. Uh, that is now uh, the infrastructure or capital investment we need from national government to invest in Amatoli. The long-term outlook makes for uncomfortable viewing. The district says it needs 11 billion rand to address its water infrastructure. If it were to be left to just infrastructure grants, it would take more than 40 years to eradicate the backlog. Yanga Funani, SABC News in the Eastern Cape. Uh, residents in Swaiz Renege in the northwest province are pinning their hope in an upcoming by-election to bring change to the embattled Mamusa local municipality. The municipality was dissolved and an administrator was appointed, but communities there continue to experience an acute water shortage, sewage, spillage and no refuse collections. This has been the state of affairs for years. The epitome of a dysfunctional municipality, Mamusa is one of the 13 placed under administration in May. It's made up of areas including Swazdereneke, Mirtol, Ipelecheng, Amalia and Glodina. The ANC has been in control since the dawn of democracy, but it's been paralyzed by internal political squabbles. Election promises remain unfulfilled and violent service delivery protests the order of the day. For the fact that the municipality has been dissolved, I'm really happy. This municipality has been operated by corrupt people. The council has been useless all the time, and we, if you don't know how the, the councillors were elected into the, into, into the office, and the councillors don't know even their uh, uh, duties and responsibilities as councillors uh, within, within the council here. So they are not executing their duties. The Wansel Dam is the only source of water. For the past 15 years, it's been a scarce commodity with the municipality failing to explain. The bucket system has not been replaced as promised by the ANC and sewage spillage remains a health risk. This sewer system has been like that for more than 10 years. Uh, we have, we've been having um, leaders coming in, going out, but this problem remains. It's many years struggling with water, and at this time of the festive, it gets worse. We are even forced to push wheelbarrows at our age. These toilets have been left without being drained. They are not even flushed. We don't even have water. The provincial government says it was constitutionally obliged to dissolve the council after all interventions to rescue it had failed. I have been to that municipality more than twice, thrice, to try and say to councillors, let's work together. We have seen councillors themselves fighting the administrator to the extent that they went into the office of the administrators, forcefully removing them from office. We then said, no, now here we have reached a stage where councillors are the one obstructing intervention that could lead to delivery of services to the people. Although the ANC interim leadership supports Premier Job Mokoro for dissolving the council, the matter has caused further divisions. The priority is the community of Mamusa. Whether the councillors who have been there or not, but once the community suffers, it's where we get in. Hence we say we do support uh, the dissolution of Mamusa local municipalities, the African National Congress. Opposition parties also support the move, 
but say the provincial government should keep a close watch on officials. Officials in that municipality must also be changed and get new people because those people already have developed ways, you know, of corrupting that municipality. The dissolution of Mamusa municipality, it's been done by the MEC and the COCTA, but the main problem still exists in the municipality because of officials are not dissolved. They are still employed, they still get paid. Residents hope a new crop of councillors will improve their living conditions. Voter registration takes place on the 17th and 18th of November. Bafetile Mwerani, SBC News, Mamusa Local Municipality.